Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Friday, November 16th, 2018. I uh, wanted to do a quick market update video. I, I was planning on doing an all-inclusive video. I have a lot of things I want to cover, um, uh, particularly for members of the site. I want to cover, there's several trade ideas that we have, both active trades, other things we're watching that stand out right now, and I want to hit on those. I want to talk about oil, gold, um, I had a question put to me, a couple questions lately on Bitcoin, so I want to touch on that, give you my thoughts there, and uh, a few trading tips that I want to share. And so I was going to put that all in one video, but I figured, you know what, yeah, even if I do a quick market overview, which I'll do here, the video might run too long. So let's break it into two parts. This will be market analysis, and I will, uh, as soon as I'm finished with this video, I'll put together the other one um, for members uh, on covering some of those other other non-stock market items and as well as some trading tips and uh, things that I've noticed lately. All right, this is NQ. These are the NASDAQ 100 E-mini futures. I zoomed in a little bit here. Same chart I've been uh, highlighting recently. Um, you know, one reason I like to uh, cover this chart so often, whether I'm trading NQ or not or any of the futures, is because it to me it's like having almost x-ray vision into what the market is doing uh, what i mean by that is the futures trade around the clock virtually around the clock uh, and there's liquidity you can trade nqes at three in the morning uh, and you can do it with a market order which normally you'd never do on a you know a overnight on a you know most securities and that's because they're so liquid there's so much trading when most traders in the u.s are asleep people in Europe and Asia trading the U.S. markets. And and so what that's doing is showing us those round-the-clock trades, and we can then better identify trend lines, divergences, things like that. And so this is a chart I've been watching, and I will get to uh, QQQ in a second. I know a lot of you don't trade futures, and, and so I'll give you some levels on QQQ. Um, so before the market opened today, in pre-market, I posted a, these charts, uh, NQ and ES, uh, this is a live chart right now, uh, stating that we were uh, we had uh, faded the breakout. We had the breakout yesterday above the down uh, the bullish falling wedge here on NQ, uh, the Nasdaq 100 futures. This is a big level, about 6907, give or take. It is a very well defined resistance level. That's where the breakout stopped yesterday, not by surprise. Uh, again, you can see a lot of reactions along here in the past uh, past few weeks. And you can see that's a level we've been knock, knock, knocking on recently. So that is the big level to watch now. Um, I, I'll tell you, at this point, I wouldn't be surprised if we take it out. I know there's some, there's cross currents in the market. You know, the trend has been bearish. They've been selling into the rips uh, so far. And that will be the, you know, the MO until it's not anymore. I just want to point out, I have to respect these divergences. And, you know, I've continued to highlight these. Um, that first divergent low was at this point right here, down to here, and uh, you can see that played out for a nice pop. Uh, actually, so I really shouldn't extend the divergence lines, to be honest with you, because that you want to have the divergence at the lows. That's what a positive divergence is. Price is making a lower low, which we did here, with the momentum indicators making higher lows. So there's your divergence point, and the divergence is playing out. And again, so what I pointed out this morning, uh, two ways to play this. If you think this will prove to be a bear trap, I'm sorry, bull trap or a false breakout uh, on the back test, uh, and it's a little late now. I mean, you could have done it. You could have shorted right there, uh, expecting that back test to fail with a stop, a very relatively tight stop above on the back test. So if it went down, you're living it. But now you would have been stopped out. And the other thing I mentioned, if uh, you know, you can also go long here on the back test. Uh, like I said, trading, it's it's really not whether you're bullish or bearish. It's identifying objective entries. So if you went here, whichever way you want to do it, they're both objective. Um, you know, I have to give the benefit of the doubt, I think, because you have the strong divergences, you have the breakout. Uh, so usually I mean, one would go long on a back test. So there's two entries on a, on a bullish falling wedge. You either go long on the breakout or if you get a back test, you go long there with a stop not too far below. So if we fall back within the wedge, we lose the trend line, you know, come down here. Then that's a foil, that's a failed breakout. But as of now, we're moving up. And again, 69.07, give or take. There's some little spike highs above that in that range. If we take it out, you can see some uh, some of my other upper uh, targets there. Or, or I should say, yeah, resistance levels, targets, if you want to trade it. So watch this level today. Either way, that, that could be a big level. You could really get a big green, you know, strong green candle if they can pop that with conviction. I think a lot of stops for shorts will be popped. So there's your next objective long entry if you're an active trader. 
uh, and or if you're a swing trader and you're short and you have you have some nice profits you want to protect, um, it, it, everybody's different. Anybody, you know, if you shorted here, that's the last time somewhere in here we added the, the QQQ short trade. And so we're still very profitable. And even a pop above there up to this level is still, will we'll still be profitable on that trade. But however, if you want to protect profits, there's nothing wrong with that. So you want to stop a little bit above there, uh, give it a little room for a fake pop. But uh Again, where your entry is, everybody has different entries. People, you know, I know this from just being in the trading room. People have shorted all along here. Uh, some people were short from when we shorted way back here on the highs. So, uh, again, everybody's, uh, you know, where your stop should be are commensurate with where your average entry price is, where your price target is, and, of course, what your risk tolerance and or stop allowance is. And that's different with everybody. I'm just showing you levels that uh, are likely to trigger either uh, a reversal. You know, if we run up there again and fail, then that just shows you, that there are too many sellers waiting at or above this level, quite bearish, especially if you were to see a big dump into the close today and come out and take out that back test. That wouldn't look good for Monday. Uh, so there's that. And uh, again, that would uh, pop us here, maybe run up to this level. If it happens today, it would certainly keep everybody guessing over the weekend. And, uh, you know, it's a rule generally if I'm, I don't like to establish new positions very often in front of a, a weekend. Uh, so, you know, if you have swing trades, you leave those on. And if you're active trading or considering entering a swing trade today, well, you're going to have two nights of overnight risk to uh, worry about. But let's look at some of the other things on the charts and that might help uh, clarify, you, um, you know, your decision as to what to do today. This is ES, the S&P 500 E-mini futures. Again, I also posted this before uh, the market opened today, highlighting this back test. So the story was yesterday we took out on both NQ and ES, and that's what I tell you. I like to see both take out resistance for a buy signal because if one runs up here and pops above it, let's say ES did that yesterday, but NQ at the same time was at its downtrend line and then failed, that would have led to a most likely a failed breakout on ES. But they both broke out yesterday, and in perfect unison today, they both back tested. So, again, uh, you know, uh, whether you're bull or bear, you just have to take it for what it is. That's a breakout and a back test. Well watch level technical analysis is working to the button lately, which is usually the case when volatility is high. So, there was your, you know, possible long entry. And now you can see we're coming up on some pretty decent uh, resistance, really where that dotted line yesterday's close. So, there's a level on that line's at, what is that, 27.32 roughly. Or maybe that's that line. So we'll move that line up a little bit. 27.33. You can see quite a few reaction highs there. Some reaction lows there. I think that's the level to watch. If we can pop above that with conviction, 27.50 I think is baked in the cake. Um, you know, unless they happen to come in and just sell this out of nowhere. But that's that's where I'm, I'm thinking we're probably going to go today. Uh, I think we're going to pop those levels and run up today. Whether it's an intraday trade and you want to get out before the weekend or see if it can build next week, that's up to you. Uh, let's look at QQQ SPY and then the Big Apple. I want to show you guys something on that. All right, QQQ, bullish falling wedge, 60-minute chart. We had the divergence, not very big, but there were, was the uh, positive divergence. You zoom in there. There it is, uh, big green candle yesterday, breakout right up to the 168.67 resistance level. Again, not an arbitrary line. Uh, you can see all the reactions. Big old gap right here, the top of that gap. Uh, and it was tested several times. There's another gap in here and uh, a lot of failures at that point. So there's the big level today to watch. Pop above 168.70 uh, should propel us easily up to 170.40, if not up all the way up here. Uh, and I think that's probably a more likely target, about 172. Uh, yeah, about 172 on QQQ. Uh, likewise, a failure there, um, which again, that's been the trend lately. Um, the failure there. Uh, could take us down and just have this breakout prove to be fleeting. And uh, if we start heading down, we take out today's lows. Um, you can see I have sort of a last last ditch uh, support here, about 160.20, give or take. But as I said before, the closer we get to these lows, we'll probably probably start to waterfall down through there. And again, you know, this could happen. It could happen Monday. There's always big risk when you go home over the weekend. So if you take a trade today, uh, again, it depends on your trading. So it might be prudent to close that out if you take a long for an active trade uh, and you hit these targets, maybe get out over the uh, weekend or hedge up. 
or take you know part profits and let the rest ride. And again, if you're short, uh, what you want to see is we haven't taken that level out yet. So um, we may fail there and move back down. We may pop intraday, come up, hit 170.40 or any of these levels, and, and then reverse by the close. Anything is possible. The day is still young, so we'll see what happens. SPY, positive divergence on the RSI there. Bullish crossover on the PPO, but the PPO is still down in bearish territory. Uh, I don't see a whole lot of resistance up here at about 275.13. Of course, you can watch that level I just showed you on ES when you really zoom in there. But on SPY, I don't see a whole lot. So this is the first level to watch today. That's where you're likely to get a reaction. Maybe that caps the advance if this advance continues to build some strength, which I'm looking like it's probably going to. Um, so watch that 213, 275-ish uh, level. Uh, maybe a place to take some quick profits if you did buy the futures this morning uh, when it was posted in pre-market. Uh, or uh, if they pop that level, uh, 281, that's uh, really the, the first significant resistance level. And that would be a move of about, that's about 2.7% from where we're at. And if, if that happens, we'll just have to um, really assess the charts and see if it changes things on the daily and weekly charts. So, but for now, let's just, let's, uh, let's just be flexible and, and uh, be prepared for anything. If, that's, if nothing else, this market has taught us. Sometimes when a day looks like it couldn't get any more bearish or couldn't get any more bullish, that's right when the reversal comes. So stay on your toes, guys. And finally, Apple. <laughs> Okay, on the 60-minute chart, recently I pointed out these divergences. I started pointing them out here. They were getting stretched. But yesterday I mentioned, look, they're still clinging by the hair of their skin to their teeth there, meaning flat uh, line divergence, equal lows on the PPO, but yet lower lows in price. And the divergence is playing out uh, right now. Uh, hard to say. You can see some levels I have on this tar uh, chart. I'd have, to, I'd have to really sharpen it up a bit. Um, yeah, I guess that 196 level right here uh, should be the first resistance. It's not solid resistance, um, but it is a, p a potential stopping point. If not, you have this big old gap right here. So let's let's put a line there. Let me well, add a new line. Uh, you have the bottom of the gap right there, about 199.76, and the top of the gap about 202.23. Uh, this would probably be at this point in time. Uh, my uppermost bounce target, and of course that can change. Uh, so there it is, 199.76. But more importantly than this 60-minute chart is this. This is a daily chart. Uh, I've got another one here. Here's a long-term trend line. In fact, let me show it to you on a weekly. Let me show you a clean version. There it is. This trend line comes off the 2009 lows. This is the bull market, the king of trend lines right now for Apple. There's your 2009 lows. I go back there weekly let me uh go to a different board and draw it out here it is you can see it picks up here pretty good off the 2016 lows so right now apple has just come down and so far is hammering off a major trend line and this is one of the biggest drops in years too so apple is uh although it's let's see it's yeah it hit oversold on the daily uh last time we were oversold and i'm going to caution you on this that oversold in a bull market is different from oversold in a bear market if that's what this is we can't call it a bear market yet we're not there by that 20 percent drop but you can see i've circled these um they're already circled on this chart all the oversold readings that's seven that green line a level of 30 or below uh this one might have just hit or came very close but either way you had bullish divergence there so you can see what happened each and every time Apple was oversold. So if you're an Apple bull and you've been waiting to buy the dip and and you've been patient, con first of all, congratulations. You know, I all along, you know, thought this stock was going lower. When it was one of the last big fang stocks to buckle, but it's come in pretty good now. Uh, and so I would certainly, if I had to be long or short Apple here, I would be long. I'll tell you that right now. I'd be long with a stop somewhat below that trend line. There is uh, some decent support around uh, 181.70 that it may want to hit first. And you can see that level. I have a couple reactions there. Um, but again, this trend line, and I just showed it to you on a weekly chart. And if you look at the history of going long Apple uh, when it's been oversold, it would have paid off very well in the past. So take it for what it's worth. And again, oversold in a bear market tends to become much more oversold, meaning drops below 30 or stays oversold for an extended period of time um, but there it is as far as you know 
take out, strip out your bull bear mentality. If you want to just trade objectively, um, then I can say Apple is an objective long at the trend line with a stop somewhat below. You're going to have to give it room in this market. You know, if it just ticks a little bit below there, uh, intraday, you might want to wait for a daily, solid daily close, big red candle below there. Uh, so that also is giving me pause right now on the, you know, my, my bearish downside scenario, because if Apple bounces from here, uh, holds this support, it's very unlikely the market's going to drop another five plus percent if Apple either holds up or moves up three, four, five percent over that period of time. Possible, but unlikely. All right, let's just wrap it up here. Um, yeah, I was going to go into the small mid caps, but uh, if I get a request in the trading room, I'll do that. In fact, somebody asked for a chart yesterday on IWM and I put that up. So we'll keep it. We'll keep this one short. 15 minute video. Um, and remember, I don't know on the site. I always list this when I post these videos that you can on YouTube, you can go into the settings and increase the playback speed to either. Well, you can increase it up to 2.0, but that's almost impossible to follow. I like to go to one and a quarter or one and a half when I watch a video and it'll cut the time down. So, um, and of course, you know, if you preze over, sometimes I talk fast in these videos, so you can just stop it put the sound back to a 1.0 one, one, 1 playback time and uh, rewind. Uh, so just a tip there for you if you're not aware. Okay, this has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. And if anything major happens today, by the end of the day, I'll do a uh, weekly closing market wrap. Have a great day.